Jones. Hey, Junior Jones. And you know, this is the first time that Marco Antonio comes into traditional Mexican mariachi music. And here's a guy, he's in a great spot physically, emotionally, he would like to take care of business right away. You don't want these fights before the title to linger. There's Marco Antonio, 45-2, and two. his only two defeats to Junior Jones. Each fight was uh, tinged with controversy. Now getting ready, he hopes to take on Richie Wenton, but in front of him, he has one bout. That one is this tonight against uh, Pedro Javier Torres. And there you see Torres, 30 wins, 12 defeats, 7 uh, draws, and has fought uh, out of Argentina former Argentine and South American champion. He has fought several good fighters, top-notch fighters like uh, Eric Morales and Hugo Soto, um, Juan Domingo Cordoba, but uh, he has not been able to post a victory over those fighters. He's hoping finally to uh, get over the hill here tonight against a world-ranked fighter, and that is Marco Antonio Barrera. Here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. now with the ring introductions of the fighters. Ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us across the Southland on KCAL Channel 9, we welcome you to our featured bout of the evening brought to you by Forum Boxing Incorporated, Caesars Tahoe, and Budweiser, the undefeated, undisputed king of beers. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Dr. Elias Ghanem, commissioners Glenn Carano, Lorenzo Fertitta, Dr. Luther Mack, and Dr. James Nave. The executive director is Mark Ratner. Introducing to you our judges scoring this bout from ringside, John McSweeney, Patricia Jarman Manning, and Dave Moretti, and our referee in charge of this main event. He'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Vic Draculich. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, a junior featherweight special attraction scheduled for 10 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the red corner, entering the ring wearing red, white, and blue trunks, and hailing from Salto, Argentina. His weight, 122 pounds, with a record of 30 wins, 12 losses, and 7 draws. He has 8 wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing Pedro Javier Alacran Torres. And his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the blue corner in this 10-round main event. Wearing gold trunks with black lettering, hailing from Mexico City, Distrito Federal, Mexico. He weighed in at 124 pounds, with an outstanding record of 45 wins, only two losses. He has 33 big wins coming by way of knockout. Currently ranked the WBO number two contender. Here is the former WBO junior featherweight champion of the world, known as the baby faced assassin, introducing Marco Antonio Barrera. Once again, a referee in charge, Vic Draculich, now to give instructions 10 rounds of boxing scheduled. All right, gentlemen, you received your instructions in the dressing room. This time, any questions? Preguntas? Preguntas? You come here. You come here. Not going to call. All right. All right, gentlemen, I want you to obey my commands. Protect yourselves at all times. Touch them up. Good luck to both of you. All right, Barrera and Torres getting the instructions from Vic Draculich. You take a look. You see Barrera is three years younger than is uh, Pedro Javier Torres and has a huge uh, reach advantage, six inches in reach for Marco Antonio. This bout will be fought under Nevada rules, which means that there is a three knockdown rule, no standing eight. A fighter can be saved by the bell only in the last round, only the ref can stop the fight. We'll go to the scorecards after three rounds in case we have to implement the accidental foul rule. Here we go now, round number one, scheduled for 10. Marco Antonio Barrera, and don't blink, remember his last fight was a one round KO here on KCAL. You know, it was Ricardo Maldonado asked for an explanation as to what is a low blow because apparently they felt that uh, Torres had had his trunks up kind of high. And good job by the referee 
make that very clear at the beginning so there's no question. Well, you look at Pereira and the credentials, a six-inch reach advantage. It's almost unfair given everything else he's got. Pereira should, you would think, be too strong, and he's already hurt Torres, who goes down from a left hook to the body, and Vic Draculich is calling for time here. Torres They're asking for a low blow. Yes. That is one of the reasons why they were they wanted an explanation about the uh, low blows. Well, I'll tell you, Torres had his back to us, so we really could not see where that punch landed. But he's fighting scared right now. He is really, you would have to say, I don't a know Bantamweight or Junior Bantamweight, Torres, who's stepping up to try to take on one of the great fighters in the world today, Marco Antonio Barrera. Tough task. Torres is used to fighting in that manner. He pretty much takes a fight anywhere against anybody. He says that a life, la boxing is his livelihood, and he will take a fight against anybody. He was getting ready for a championship fight, and uh, he took this fight. You can see Torres actually has had a lot more rounds in his career than Marco Antonio has put in, but... And again, Barrera has put in a lot of early knockouts in his career. And Barrera a little bit off here with his attack. A lot of those punches missing. Now he could set it up with a jab as he gets a little closer and gets a little bit sharper with his timing. And there's the danger of some of these right. tune-up fights. Look at the head right. of Torres. Came in very, very close. And if they keep on, on uh, coming like this, he might get a bump there. Barrera would fight Richie Wenton for the title if he comes out of this unscathed on October 31st for the title vacated by Kennedy McKinney who is stepping up to the 126 pound class so he has left the uh, junior featherweight division Herrera would fight Wenton on the same card with uh, Nassim Hamed and uh, Wayne McCulloch on October 31st back in Atlantic City. Now, Fernando, you talked about a guy willing to take a fight anywhere. Torres fought the same guy three times in five weeks. <laughs> well, he says that uh, he oh, wasn't able to get that many fights down in Argentina, so he would just fight in over. Buenos Aires. Uh, he would travel almost 1,800 miles to go and fight there. He said that finally he's able to live up boxing now. Torres had a nice amateur career, 46 and 3. And says that basically after this fight he intends to go back down to the 115 pound class. And fight for the championship of South America. So you have two guys that are going for a championship fight next. Final seconds of round one. Remember this is a scheduled 10 rounder. And we'll be right back. You are throwing uh, great punches to the body. Just lift him up a little bit. Use your jab so you can measure him. Throw all of your punches in the inside. Also move your head away so you don't get bump in the head. If you see that he is, has his guard up too close, use the uppercut, go through the middle. You can still throw and land the right. Don't throw any punches to his head right now. And this is Torres not getting the call on the low blow there by Barrera. Came in a little bit low. Sometimes the fighter can get up to five minutes, but Torres got right up there. Pedro Javier Torres. Screen right with his back to you now, and Marco Antonio Barrera on the attack in the gold trunks. They told Barrera not to throw too many punches to the head right now. Go to the body, work him to the body. The first thing he does is go to the head. <laughs> you know, I was he likes to follow the instructions. <laughs> Good left hook by Barrera again claiming a low blow is Torres. It was on the hip actually. I was intrigued by your comment, Fernando, about Barrera for the first time coming into mariachi music. Do you find that maybe with, with Chavez finishing his career that that uh, is not just a coincidence, that maybe there's some significance to that? Well, I think that his management now is seeing that, hey, there's a place for a Mexican idol right there. Eric Morales did great. You have Enrique Sanchez, the other 122-pound champ there, uh, trying to get out his spot there. And Juan Manuel Marquez, maybe he could uh, yeah. find himself in that this same category. 
Come on, break it. Pedro so, Javier Torres is a, a 